Okay everyone, so three quick examples. This is the last set of examples we're going to get on particles, uh, kinetic particles and tension problems or anything like that because we're moving on to impulse and momentum after this. So I really hope this is these series of videos have helped you um, complete your assignments and just feel a bit more confident with mechanics. Uh, it's quite unusual for this many videos to be put out I think, so uh, we're in quite a good position. So let's read this. So a smooth bead Instantly, smooth bead, we're thinking tension's the same because it's in equilibrium. It's going to be, it's going to even out our tensions across string. So that's good. Remember, if it's attached, the tensions may not necessarily be the same. Uh, on a light and extensible string, the ends of the strings are attached to two fixed points, A and C, where A is vertically above C. So like always, you can stop the tape and you can start drawing out your forces by yourself. Uh, and then we can catch up. The bead is held in equilibrium by a horizontal force of magnitude 2 newtons. The sections AB and BC of the string make angle 30 degrees and 60 degrees uh, respectively. So 30 degrees and 60 degrees. And this is uh, the mass B here. Uh, do we know the mass? No. Nope. So we'll just call that mg. And it's been held in tension by a force of 2 newtons. There's going to be tension there. There's going to be tension there. It's going to be the same because it's in equilibrium and it's a smooth bead. Don't care about any forces on the wall. All we care about is the forces on the particle. Okay. So, let's do the normal stuff. We're trying to find tension in the string. Personally, I would look at this as a horizontal. We know this is 60 degrees, so this is the one next to the angle. So this is T cos 60, and this is T sine 60. Likewise for this one, uh, this one here, this has to be included, but this angle is going to be 30. So here's T cos 30, and going down is t sine 30. So now we can start getting to work. So if we resolve to the right, 2 is going right, and there is t cos 60 and t cos 30 opposing it. It's in equilibrium, so it equals 0. So we know that 2 is t cos 60 plus t cos 30. Take out a factor of t, so that's cos 60 plus cos 30 equals 2. Divide by that, and we get our t. So calculate this out, folks. So that's 2 over cos 60 plus cos 30. <laughs> So I've got 1.46 newtons to 3 SF. So again, you check that. I could make mistakes. I've made them before, like in the integration video. Uh, but lucky I spotted it at the end. So part B, mass of the bead. Find the mass of the bead, giving your answer to the nearest gram. So this time, of course, we're going to have to resolve upwards. What forces are going up? Well, there's T sine 60. Anything opposing it? Absolutely, so mg minus our t sine 30, and again, this equals 0. We're trying to find m, so let's rearrange. So we get mg is t sine 60 minus t sine 30 all over g if we divide by g. We know what t is. We just found it a second ago. So t was 1.46410165. Times sine 60 minus 1.46, blah, blah, blah. Sine 30 all over G. So therefore, M equals a bit messy, sorry. So that's answer sine 60, but hopefully you're just following this along and you're not just relying on me. Answer sine 30 divided by G, which is 9.8. So this is 0 0.05468, etc. kilograms. 
it wants it to the nearest gram. How many grams are in a kilo? There are thousands of them. So to the nearest gram, that would be uh, 0 0.055 grams. Uh, kilograms, so five, um, 55 grams, wouldn't it be? That would be 55 grams if you times that by a thousand. Cool. Oh yeah, three SF, or to, to nearest gram. So actually this would be two SF then, wouldn't it? Because your first significant figure is five. Okay, so read the question. <laughs> Next one. <clears throat> A ball is released from rest. So I thought this would be good because this is SUVAT problem. We haven't done a SUVAT problem in a while. So a ball is uh, released from rest at a point which is 10 meters above the ground. So remember, released from rest means its initial velocity is zero. Each time the ball strikes the floor, it rebounds with three quarters of the speed with which it strikes the floor. Find the greatest height above the floor reached by the ball A the first time it rebounds from the floor and B the second time. Okay, so see that table. Let's say its direction is down. Uh, we know it travels 10. We know it starts with 0. V don't know. It's going down, so positive uh, acceleration with G. Trying to find the final velocity. So v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So again, you should be working through this. And you should be testing your answer against my answer at the end. So if we find out what v is, v is going to be 2 times 9.8 times 10. Square root of the answer. And that's 14. But is it going to be positive 14 or negative 14? It's going to be negative 14 in this context remember because it's rebounding um oh, actually it is going to be positive sorry Ugh, i'm talking about the rebound so it will be 14 meters per second going downwards because all of our pos all of our positive direction is relative to down it says that it rebounds with three quarters of the speed so if it's going back up then, so now it's shooting back up with a new U, and the U is going to be 14, 3 quarters of 14. So 0.75 times that is 21 over 2, so this is 10.5 meters per second. So now we've got S equals U equals V equals A equals T equals. We're now going up because it's shooting back up. Um, our 10.5 is there, don't know S. V is 0, because it's the greatest height, isn't it? Minus 9.8, and T is done. So, find the greatest height, we're trying to find S. So, exactly, V squared, U squared, plus 2AS again. Uh, 0, 10.5 all squared, 2, minus 9.8, and then our S. Rearrange for S. So we get 10.5 squared divided by 2 times 9.8. And we should get 5.625 meters. Because we've done it with G though, our answer will be 5.63 for 3 sig fig. That's the answer to part A. Part B though, the second time this thing hits the floor, you've got the same process at the same process um, so now it's the problems changed because this is 5.625 above the ground uh, u is zero again so we can keep going so hopefully you can rush past now because now we've got 5.625 because you want to know the second time it rebounces from the floor. So U is 0, V don't know, A is 9.8 if we're going down positively, T is T. Need to know V again, so V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So therefore V squared is 2 times 9.8 times 5625. Therefore V 
It is 2 times 1 times 8 times 5.65. 1, 1, 0, 25 square rooted gives you 10.5, which makes sense. That is going down and coming back up with the same speed that it started with. So 10.5. So that's just to prove that. And then we're repeating that process. So it's at the, it's coming, uh, it's coming up three quarters of that speed, isn't it? So now it's coming up with u equals 10.5.75. So that's 7.875. Uh, u 7.875. V 0 minus 9.8. T is T. It's going up this time. Don't care about t. v squared is u squared plus 2as. So hopefully you're kind of skipping me doing all this as you're only watching this. If you made a mistake, <coughs> and we should get 0 then. It's 7.875. 0 equals 7.875 squared plus 2 minus 9.8s. Yes. And therefore, s will equal squared divided by two times three point one six meters to three sf. So hopefully, we agree there. Last one. Um, okay. So a particle of weight twenty newtons. So straight away, should we pop that down in there? Yeah, I think we should. So twenty is down there rests in equilibrium on a smooth inclined plane it's inclined in equilibrium uh, maintained in equilibrium by application of two external forces which we can see one of the forces horizontal the other is acting at 75 degrees to the horizontal makes sense find the value of p find the value of the normal reaction okay cool so a normal reaction is there hopefully you're thinking the same as me that we need to split our forces up into perpendicular and parallel to the slope. So we'll start off a different colour if I were you with our weight. So that's 20 cos 45 It's next to the angle and 20 sine 45 is the other one. And then we've got our P which is also split up into P cos 30 it's next to the angle and P sine 30 here. And then we've got our 5 newtons as well. So I'll do this one in blue. And what's that Z angle? That's 45, so therefore that's 45. So we're going down as well. 5 cos 45, as it's next to the angle. And then we'll also have an upwards force of 5 sine 45. Okay, hopefully we see that. Therefore, if we resolve up the slope, so we've got P cos 30 going up. Again, it's, it is literally always the same. It's just getting over drawing those forces uh, accurately. So this all equals zero. And therefore, we can find what P is if we rearrange. So 20 sine 45 plus 5 cos 45 all over cos 30. So that will equal calculators out. So 20 sine 45 plus 5 cos 45 divided by cos 30. So that's 20.4. Newtons to 3SF, but I'll keep the full value in my calculator because I'm probably going to need it. And now for that was part A and part B wants us to find the normal reaction. So going up the slope, lots of forces here. So we've got 5 sine 45, we've got R, and we've got P sine 30. What's opposing it? Just the 20 cos 45 equals 0. Quick count of all the forces there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all forces are being used, 
so I know we're all good in the hood. And uh, now we can bring everything over. <coughs> 5, sign 45. And we know what P is already from above. I'll use my full calculator value for that. That 20.41241. So hopefully you're doing this as well. Remember, there's no point doing this if it's just me doing this. Minus 5, sign 45. So we should get R as being something quite small and we get 0 0.4 so 407 3SF Wicked! and that's it for these problems so hopefully this is this has helped I kind of understand what you need to do thanks